Yep, I got the boomer chair out again you know, and slapped the handle like a real old timer. So I think I have come across the greatest case of new car slash EV insanity yet. Not the biggest, but like the most, the craziest. So, you know, we've done a bunch of videos in the past about some of the pitfalls of modern technology, right? We've done EVs setting fire to houses, EVs setting fire to container ships. We've done EVs setting fire to car parks. And we've done like the insanity of modern auto repair. There was the $5,600 F-150 taillight. There was a $41,000 Rivian dent. All right, so we've done a lot of these videos. And I'm gonna, not going to lie, these things get views, you know, so, but I don't want to be that channel that's always focusing on the negative. You know, I could do a channel that only does this stuff because I'm barraged by it constantly. I'm barraged by it because I click on these videos as they pop up right? and, I, and I, I read these stories and, and so it's, I've got a constant, you know, it's a constant flow of new information that's just, it's just, one thing is just more insane than the next. It's a guilty pleasure, I gotta be honest with you. Because I'm a boomer and I like watching this stuff, you know, self-destruct. I don't like to see anybody get hurt. I don't like to see anybody taken advantage of. I don't like to see, I, I, I don't like to see how things are going in general. But again, you see, I'm a boomer. So, you know, you sit back and you say, <laughs> look at the stupid stuff that they're doing. All right, so where am I? There was one I was going to do, I guess it was yesterday, the day before yesterday, I says, I passed on it, right? Because it seemed kind of trivial, but it's like indicative. There was a uh, an F-150, again, an F-150, right? Uh, that has this common problem where the console, the overhead console in the cab goes out. And <laughs> so what it is, is it's a common problem that's usually traced to a broken wire in the harness, all right? So now remember, these are LEDs now, they're not like regular bulbs. So they've downsized the scale of the wires and the plugs. So, I mean, we've had this type of arrangement forever, right? You know, wiring with a plastic pigtail. But now these wires have become so small and the pigtail so small that when there's a break in the wire, and, and kind of a break in the wire is almost inevitable because just normal road vibration, right? The wires are so tiny that they can't be repaired anymore. You have to replace it. What's the replacement cost for this pigtail? If you go to the dealer, the replacement cost for the pigtail, this this unfixable little section of wiring, right, is 300 bucks plus the labor to install it. And, and okay, 300 bucks. And I found that you can get that wire through the aftermarket for around 100. But still, still, okay, why are you making it this small and this fragile? I'm, I'm getting off the track. I'm getting off the track. But like I said, it's become a guilty pleasure of mine. Every morning I have my coffee, I watch Jeff buys cars, and I play Car Fire Bingo. Right? Great channel. You guys, you should check him out. But so what am I, I'm, I'm, I'm gone. I'm all over the map here, right? Why am I, why am I giddy? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So here's the story with this guy. This happens up in Canada. This fellow goes and he buys a Hyundai Ionic, Ionic. He goes and buys a Hyundai Ionic, and it's a 2022. So he takes it on a road trip, and during the course of this road trip, he hits something in the road. Now his story is that he, it was an it was a uh, in, an object he couldn't help but hit. Right, you know, he couldn't avoid it, couldn't swerve quickly enough. The damage tells a slightly different story, but it's it's irrelevant really to the bigger picture, and I'll get to that in a minute. So. He hits this thing in the road. And then after the road trip is done, the car's driving, everything's fine, right? But he wants to bring it to the dealer to have it checked out. So he brings it to the dealer. The dealer puts it up on the lift, looks it over for a couple of minutes and says, nope, you need a battery. But he drove the car there. It's all good, right? Yep, you need a battery. It's been damaged. All right. So now I've seen the pictures of the damage. I've seen two pictures. The first is a shot showing the belly pan of this car. So it's got like a, a protective, uh, pictures now, the, the entire floor of the car, the entire floor is battery, okay? And then under that, to protect it, I guess from minor road hazards, is like a, for lack of a better word, a, a skid plate, right? But it's, it's not really a skid plate, it's just like a, a cover. You know, you know what I'm talking about, right? The type of cover that 
they, they put under everything these days. But anyway, at the, at the front edge of this skid plate, of this cover, this battery cover, you could see where the car was bottomed out, right? There's scrape marks and there's asphalt chunked into it. All right, so the guy started to hit something in the road, kind of not nearly as likely as he bottomed out. All right, so he bottomed out, no big deal. Bottoming out a car is normal. Get to that. So a second shot shows a hole, a factory hole in this cover. And if you look up inside the hole, you'll see a drain plug, what looks to be a drain plug. And I imagine it's for the battery coolant because batteries need to have their own cooling systems, of course, right? So <laughs> you see the factory hole and you see the drain plug and they totaled this car, right? They were, well, I'll get to the total part. They declared that it needs battery because the distance between the bottom of the battery and the skid plate is 15 millimeters more than it's supposed to be. 15 millimeters, right? so that's five-eighths to us regular humans. 15 millimeters, that's less than three quarters of an inch. It's between three quarters and half of an inch. So, so you get the idea, right? Okay, here, I mean, that's, that's, that's how far it's, the distance has gone. So they declare the battery has been damaged, can't be repaired, has to be replaced. The replacement cost of the battery is $61,000, $61,000 more than the car cost new. Now that's Canadian money. Okay, so let's let's make this straight now. In Canada, the, the conversion rate is to about $45,000 US. Still, $45,000. You hit something in the road, you bottom out the car a little bit as you're going down the road. It's gonna cost you $45,000 US to fix this thing because the entire battery has to be replaced. Now let's, okay, so now if you're watching this video and you're not a mechanic, right, I have to explain something to you, right? Bottoming out a car is absolutely normal. You climb under any car that's been on the road for more than a couple of years, a year, two years, three years, whatever, it's just a normal car under the road. And you will always see evidence of things coming in contact underneath the car. You'll see dents, you'll see scrapes, you'll see gouges. You'll see all sorts of evidence that through the car's life, it has come in contact with something other than a completely flat, smooth, clean roadway, right? Bottoming out is a normal thing. It happens. There's railroad tracks. There's dips in the road that just happen over time. There's potholes that get filled with water that you can't see because it... So it's like, it's almost an unavoidable thing. It's a common and nearly unavoidable thing to come across situations where your car bottoms out. But on an internal combustion engine car, as ICE car, as you guys like to call them, it's 95% of the time, it's completely inconsequential. There'll be scrape marks, there'll be gouges, there'll be dents in the oil pan, dents in the tranny cover. Worst case scenario, you dent the drive shaft that goes out around, you have to replace the drive shaft. But it's usually completely inconsequential. If it's really super bad and you, let's say you rip the bottom of the oil pan open or you rip the bottom of the tranny pan open, you replace those parts and you continue down the road. If somebody is so dense that they've ripped the oil pan you know, open and they, they're ignoring the warning lights and the gauge and that, and you know, okay, you know, so maybe you have to replace the engine. What's it going to be? $7,000, $10,000 on a new car, okay? It's still a lot of money, but not $45,000 US, $61,000 Canadian to replace this battery. How are they getting away with this? So evidently, the battery is not a normally stocked item, right? It's something that has to be ordered from Korea. Okay, so they're selling a car in North America, they're selling a car that you can't get crucial replacement parts for. So evidently, the actual cost of this replacement battery is around $15,000 or thereabouts. Don't quote me on this because this is still an evolving thing and I'm absorbing as much information on it as I can. The actual battery replacement cost isn't that much. The problem is they're not stocked for anything but assembly here in this country. So if you need a battery replacement battery for this thing, you have to import it from Korea. This thing is like over a thousand pounds. This is this is not a cheap, simple deal. You don't just jump on Amazon and say, hey, send me a battery for my Ionique. 
No, it's a major thing. So they totaled the car. They totaled the car. The cost of these things new is approximately what the replacement cost of the battery is. That's the cost of it new. Now remember, EVs have drastic depreciation. As soon as you buy the thing, like it's cut in half. Every car depreciates the minute you drive it off the showroom floor, but EVs plummet as soon as you drive it off the showroom floor because of all of the incentives and whatnot that they, the governments and the agencies and whatnot are, are giving for these cars. Well, they don't apply, you know, to a second-hand car. So as soon as you drive this thing off the lot, it goes from, you know, a seventy, eighty thousand dollar car to a forty thousand dollar car. So automatically, it's totaled. So the insurance company comes along and they total the car. Now Hyundai tried to make it right by this guy by offering him a discount on a new car, and the guy, I guess, has two, more than two rocks to rub together in his head. He says, "Thanks, but no thanks. I'll buy something else." So, the insurance company totals this car for a battery. A minor impact, a minor road impact, where things aren't ripped apart, things aren't shredded, things aren't you know, completely destroyed, mutilated, but slightly distorted, something that happens every day, all the time, all over the world, and has happened for as long as we've had cars. Something that's 95 or better percent of the time inconsequential, doesn't affect the car, you will never know you bottom out this car. Well, when you do this on an EV, especially a car EV, that rides low to the ground. Remember, these things have super weight to them. So it doesn't take much in terms of a dip to overcome the suspension because of the extra weights these things carry and slam down onto the road or whatever thing that you can't avoid or even don't know that's there to avoid. This is a common road hazard. This happens to everybody. This happens to every kind of car. But when it happens to a Hyundai Ioniq, no, kiss this sucker goodbye. The insurance company is going to total it. So you sit back and like me, you kind of snicker at the whole situation and say, told you so, right? Because you're thinking to yourself, well, you know, the insurance company is going to take it on the chin. No, it's not like that. We all take it on the chin because these insurance companies, they don't, they're not in business to just go oh, here, let me make you happy, write your big check and you know, see you down the road. So I got to say here, the only thing I hate more than senseless technology and people being taken advantage of the lawyers, you know, not as individuals, but just the system, the lawfare system that runs the world. It's perverse. But there is a time and a place where a lawyer does have a, a purpose, a, a good legitimate purpose to protect the, the consumer from bad practices. Class action lawsuits. There should be class action lawsuits everywhere against all of these different manufacturers for all of these different situations that are coming up more and more and more. Just, okay, not to like single out the, you know, the Ioniq, but that's what we're talking about here with that particular vehicle. Are buyers of these new cars made aware that a simple, common road hazard will result in their car being totaled, that the parts to repair these things Okay, so you've accepted, you bought this car, and you've accepted the fact that the battery will eventually have to be replaced at some huge cost, but you know what, that's down the road, so you don't really worry about that. Are these people made aware of the fact that a simple, common roadside hazard, something that we all come in contact with, normal, normal stuff, is going to sideline their car and in all likelihood result in it being totaled? Are, are the people who are buying these cars made aware of this? Are they made aware of the fact that the major, the most major components needed to keep these cars on the road, the battery pack, that it's not just something that you can go to the dealer and say, oh, yeah, okay, I, I screwed up, I messed up my battery, and pay a reasonable price for one to have it repaired, or that it's got to be, it's not stocked and it has to be imported to fix your car. Your car is totaled. Your car is done because of a simple sometimes, most of the time, unavoidable thing. Sometimes, you know, it's just, you misjudge a curb, okay? You misjudge, you know, you're on, you're on two wheels off the side of the road. It happens, okay? It happens. You swerve to avoid a cat, whatever it is. It's going to total your car. It's got a chance of totaling your car without actually impacting anything. Are the owners of these cars made aware of this? And if they're not made aware of this, why aren't the lawyers in there 
battling for these people who are being taken advantage of. We're all being taken advantage of, but specifically the people who buy these cars, thinking that they're as as reliable, as viable, as flexible, as repairable as common cars, as, as internal combustion engine cars, ICE cars as they like to call them. Are the people buying these cars made aware of the fragility of them? and the liabilities of making a simple mistake or misjudgment or calculation or not seeing a simple hazard in the road. Where are the lawyers? It's just crazy. Just total craziness. I, I have a new shop to go paint. I'll see you tomorrow. You know, it occurred to me after I shot that, that maybe Hyundai can add an R right there and call it the ironic. You know, wouldn't that be great? It fits. The electric car that's intended to save the world, but ends up on a scrap pile after encountering a minor road hazard. I love this stuff. I may be having too much fun with it. I'll see you tomorrow.